Greetings extended family, it's your sister Mari here with African Diaries. If you didn't know already, this channel is all about spreading knowledge and inspiration of the Gambia so that hopefully the African diaspora would want to visit, relocate or invest in the Gambia and also for the Africans living in Africa to want to stay in the motherland. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, hit the subscribe button and follow along on the journey. So in this video, I wanted to get real with you guys. I wanted to talk about some real issues that are affecting Gambia. I wanted to speak about mindsets that I have seen in the Gambia that I want to come to an end. So the first mindset I wanted to touch upon is uh, the West being better than Africa. And what I mean by the West being better, I mean America, Australia, Europe, South America, like that everywhere else in the world is better except Africa. And more specifically now we are speaking about Gambia. Okay, speaking from experiences, I have time and time again encountered Gambians, especially Gambian youths, that always have this mindset of uh, Europe or like the US being like heaven. They have a lot of misconceptions about life outside of the Gambia that they are willing to risk their lives to get out of the Gambia, to make better lives for themselves outside of the Gambia. And I'm not talking about all of the youths in the Gambia, of course. As I said earlier, I'm speaking about experiences that I have had throughout the years. Some of these youths that I'm speaking about, they don't see anything better than going outside of the Gambia, making better lives for themselves, and in turn also helping their families. Because they have this like pressure from society, they have this pressure on themselves, uh, from family members, etc. And they just generally don't feel like they are enough. But what I think these youths are failing to see is that life over here is not always better than in the Gambia. Like it's not always a guarantee because African people outside of Africa are really going through like a lot of injustices, maltreatment, racism, hardships. They're even getting killed just for being black. And I'm sure we all know that by now. It's not anything new. But I still don't think that some Gambian youths realize the um, extent of the negativities that do occur outside of Africa because of the mindset that they just think that everything is better out here in the West. Like I remember there was a time where a lot of Gambians, a lot of Senegalese, uh, people from West Africa, people from um, East Africa, uh, people from different parts of Africa were trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean over, over to uh, Europe and a lot of people were dying on the way etc etc and and the media hyped it up so much back then and now you don't see or hear anything like that anymore and don't think that just because media is not like there are still Gambian youths who wants to risk their lives in the sea to cross the borders if they even survive the journey to get into places where they are not really wanted because that's what it is some of these countries they don't even want us here but think about it even though we know all this some of the youths are still willing to risk their lives. And this really puts us in a situation where we ask ourselves, how bad is their situation that they are willing to risk their lives for a better future? How do we even get there in the first place? Because thinking, reflecting and acknowledging is really the first step we need to take in doing something about it. And on the flip side, when we go back to our home countries, when we um, Africans in the diaspora go back to our home countries in Africa, or more specifically now in Gambia, we put up this image that Europe is so like nice and we have our best lives in Europe. And, you know, we put on these clothes that show, you know, we're really like making it out here. We don't, we don't portray any of the like negativities we go through. We wear fancy clothes. We brag about our money and we spend it sometimes carelessly. Now again, I'm not speaking about everyone coming from the diaspora going back home, but I'm saying that I'm seeing this way too much. And these behaviors and these like ways of living really send out a message to the Gambian people, to like the local Gambian citizens, especially the youths. While we are out here dying and suffocating, working three jobs, trying to make ends meet, taking loans, buying clothes that we don't afford with money that we don't have simply because we have other alternatives that you know you can buy something now and pay for it later we're barely sleeping out here some of us are even doing like illegal activities and sometimes for what so that we can go back home in africa hide the real truth just to put up like a front that's something that we really need to reflect upon extended family let us show our brothers and sisters in africa the real lives we are living out here let us show them that Europe is not really like heaven or whatever some people might think of Europe. I'm just saying that we should 
take this image of like Europe is heaven, put that aside because it's so not true and really show our lives that we really live here in uh, Europe. We also have our struggles and we also have our sacrifices here and there. But it's just so different from the ones in Africa. It's a different kind of struggle out here. Okay, so the second mentality I wanted to speak to you about today, extended family, is the mentality where we belittle Africa or we belittle Gambia, uh, for us Gambians, to the extent that we sometimes don't even think twice when we do certain things. And we also allow corruption to happen in our countries. You know, when we say like, ah, this is Africa, li Gambia la. You know, when we say like, fi Gambia la, fi Africa la, we don't do that here, we're not tubabs. And not really thinking about the consequences of those statements and what that mentality can bring. One of the main examples I can take in this category is about trash. Okay, so for example, when I'm eating something and then I have trash in my hands, I really take time to look for a dustbin or a, uh, a trash can where I can just toss the trash because I just don't want to throw it everywhere. But unfortunately, sometimes I don't even find a trash can. So I have to hold that specific thing or put it in my bag until I find a trash can or sometimes until I get home. Now, whosoever witnesses this always laughs at me and be like, what are you doing? And I always answer by saying, this is why the country is not going forward. But then after a while, it gets contagious and it gets contagious both ways. Like sometimes I can be like, oh, okay, I can just toss it there. Or, you know, sometimes um, the person I'm, I'm with, they sometimes might want to seek out a trash can and, and you know toss the trash and the other thing I was talking about uh, the uh, corruption occurring in our country is that um, a lot of times depending on who you know depending on sometimes who you are you can uh, get away with things or get ahead of people even though those people have more experience or more knowledge than you but you simply just get ahead of them because of your uncle is you know, the boss or the CEO or something. And this, on the other hand, do not favor people at all who don't have um, contacts or who don't have, who don't know people, basically, or, or people who have no connections whatsoever. The only thing they have is their experiences and their education, which should be enough, but sometimes, unfortunately, it's not. And also, people from the diaspora that are Gambians going back to the motherland and still taking these mindsets and applying them in the Gambia, sometimes I'd be like, what are we doing? Because out here in Europe, we follow the rules. We do whatever they want us to do. Like, we adapt to the system. And there are, you know, rules and regulations out here that we are more than willing to follow. But when we go back to the Gambia or when we go back to our African countries in general, we continue on on these corruptions. So why do we go back to our own countries, put all of the rules and regulations aside? It's, that, it's like sometimes that we don't even have laws in the Gambia. But we are more than willing to follow the laws here in Europe or here in the West. Let's be honest, some of us are like that. And it really shouldn't be like that. If we allow it to happen and we come back and continue on those footsteps, when is it ever going to get better? Now, I'm not saying I have never been part of these people that I'm speaking about. I've been part of these people for like my entire life, since I was a child and since. And when growing up, I have also felt like how it feels like to be the one without connections, which is really hard and really and really like difficult and tough to get somewhere when, when you don't know anyone. And to actually be in a position where I actually know someone who would help me forward. So my point is that we should really pay attention to this. And if we ever fall into this, that we take a step back, think again, and really try to like adjust it and improve ourselves and really give people chances. And, and really at the end of the day, just to be honest to ourselves. And for me, it's like belittling the country in a sense and also allowing the corruption to continue. So the third mindset I wanted to bring up with you guys is uh, the fact that some people think that tubabs are better than black people. So there is this mindset in the Gambia, and actually not only in the Gambia, in like the black communities, unfortunately, that I can say emerged from like the time Africans were enslaved and forced out of their countries, forced out of their homes into a new world where the white person or the white man was seen as the most superior. And that is the sad, sad mindset of thinking that white people are better than black people. Thinking that white people are better than black people for simply being white. What sort of nonsense is that? But sadly enough, that is the reality of a lot of our brothers and sisters in the Gambia. A lot of us back home in the Gambia believe that white people are the inventors of like everything. But we now know for a fact that that is so 
not true but no you barely hear black people getting any credit for any good in this world and we all know that the world wouldn't be the way it is if, the, if it wasn't for the black people some countries out there are literally built on the backs of our ancestors our ancestors basically traveled to some european countries civilized them before they were pushed back into Africa. And even till this day, the world is nothing without Africa. So my Gambian brother and my Gambian sister, and to my extended family all around the world, I want us to get over the mindset that white people are better than black people. A big part of it is really psychological trauma that we have been through, that we have been going through for decades and decades. And for us having all these like fake stuff on us just to try to be white, that we will never be anyways and not realizing how truly blessed and beautiful we truly are. We can only get through this, we can only get over this by one acknowledging that is it is a truth that it is something that is living amongst us that it exists and number two through knowledge empowering ourselves with knowledge because the more you know the wiser you get the more you know how truly great our ancestors were how great we are as a people how much we can actually accomplish the more you just realize how much of a blessing it is to be of african descent look some of us will not admit it but we won't get anywhere if we don't truly look deep in ourselves and if we have these mindsets really to like decolonize our minds, that's basically what it is about, to decolonize our minds. We really need to demolish that mindset. So to you, my beautiful Gambian brother, my beautiful Gambian sister, my beautiful Gambian auntie, uncle, grandma, granddad, and by extension, the African diaspora from all around the world, you truly are beautiful. You are valuable. You are enough. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Look, I didn't grow up actually having this. I didn't grow up having someone tell me that me as a black woman or me as a black little girl, that I was actually valuable enough. I grew up thinking that black people were really inferior to white people. I grew up thinking that white people were better than black people, that black that white people were more uh, smarter than black people, white people were more um, civilized, they were more they were like cleaner than us, and that they basically taught us everything that we know today. That was exactly what I thought because being a child, growing up in a society or an environment where they really put white people on top of black people, in the end. The children will then adopt that mindset and really think it's a reality. And I was a child living in Gambia. The, this was the time where I was living in the Gambia. So I wasn't even out here seeing white people day in, day out and, you know, thinking highly of them. I was living amongst black people. We saw white people here and there. And when we did, we really thought high of them. This mindset was really passed on to me. And we really need to break that vicious cycle. It really has to come to an end. We really need to decolonize our minds, just like I was saying before. So extended family, let me leave you with some questions. How do you feel as an African or as a black person when you are in a room full with non-Africans or with white people? Do you feel like less or like unworthy in some kind of way simply because of the skin color that you have simply because you have darker skin how is your relationship to yourself do you like your physical features like do you like your nose if it's big do you like your big nose do you like your dark skin your unmanageable hair i say unmanageable because it's really manageable we are just you know not equipped with the right information or with the right knowledge in order for us to take care of our hair so that's really what it is and i've come to realize that in the past couple of years do you avoid the sun because you're afraid that you will get darker and that you associate to darkness being ugly and for the uh, whiteness or lighter skin being associated to beauty i really need you to be true to yourself and if the answers scare you then there you have it at least you know the truth and that's the first step you need to take in order for you to do something about it. Okay, extended family, this video has really been about me voicing out my opinions, uh, categorizing these mindsets that I have seen throughout my uh, years growing up and mindsets that really have something like, I strongly, strongly dislike these mindsets. These are really issues that we really need to address. And these are actually some food for thought. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you ever been a victim of these mindsets? Do you recognize what I'm talking about? Or am I just, you know, not making sense? I would love to hear what you have to say about this. So before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to check out African Diets on Instagram. Don't forget to check out all the other videos. And until next time, be the change that you want to see. Okay, peace.